Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Today I'm going to be showing you a sweet update for Apple Silicon computers which now allows you to use Adobe Extend Script inside of Visual Studio Code. First of all, huge shout out to Justin Taylor if you're watching this. Uh, I appreciate all that you do including the sort of text tutorials that you do, uh, Bolt which is an amazing way to build extensions faster. I personally use the command IDs for After Effects all the time when I'm writing scripts and now he has a cool thing on Adobe Extend Script for Apple Silicon. If you're not already aware, on Apple Silicon computers, when you load a script in VS Code that you want to launch and say After Effects, you get this error in the bottom right saying, the Adobe Extend Script debugger extension does not currently run natively on Apple Silicon devices. To use the extension, Visual Studio Code must be opened using Rosetta. Uh, Rosetta is basically the compatibility mode and overall, it doesn't run as fast and has some other issues involved when running. But now, thanks to uh, Justin Taylor for shouting it out, we have access to run it natively on Apple Silicon, which will make it much more efficient and faster. And the reason I'm making this video is because I have one of my most popular videos on my channel is how to run scripts in After Effects and or Premiere. And it had the issue that Apple Silicon had this issue of support. But now that this is out, I can kind of correct that issue. And by the way, since this will be a shorter video, I do want to let you know in the future I have some longer form content coming up on things like uh, the updated GPU plugin set up for After Effects and Premiere and a whole lot of other useful stuff. And like he says, we'll keep this short, the title says it all. Adobe has now released ExtendScript Debugger 2.1.0 RC1, which now comes with full support for Apple Silicon devices. In days past, building Adobe CEP extensions or script UI scripts for Adobe apps required a complex setup to get working properly if you developed on an Apple Silicon Mac such as an M1, 2, or 3 series. Rosetta mode, slow Intel versions of VS Code and or Node.js were required to protect your extend script code on delivery. This is no longer required. Now developers working on Apple Silicon devices can debug extend script and build JSX bin files directly on their machine without any special setup. The latest version of the VS Code plugin can be downloaded from the Adobe CEP GitHub repo. So that is the first thing to note here. If you look at your VS Code extensions and the extend script debugger, this is not where you're going to gain access to it. So if you want to do this, go ahead and click on the first link here in the description of my YouTube video, and this is where we can get it from. So what we will do is click on this extend script debug 2.1.0.vsix file, and that will download it for us. And just as it says, just download the vsix file and install manually with the extensions tab in VS Code. So what we'll do to install this inside of VS Code is we'll go to the extensions tab, We'll click on the three dots here and we'll choose install from VSIX. Then I'll select my VSIX file and boom, just like that, it completed the install and we need to restart extensions to enable it. So right here we have a button saying restart extensions, click on that. Now I closed VS Code because last time I launched this particular script file in VS Code, it gave us the error or the pop-up saying, hey, Apple Silicon is not supported, make sure you use Rosetta. Now when I go ahead and launch it, we get no errors, it just loads. So now what I'm gonna do is make sure I have After Effects open, and I have a, the basic script here that just alerts the app.project.name and the app.project.activeitem.name, alerting the names of the current After Effects project and the current active composition, assuming you have one. If I then click on this eval in Adobe button, we can choose whatever After Effects version we're using, in my case, After Effects 2025, and we get undefined and the name of our, uh, of our composition here. So in this case, we can just uh, alert the project itself, but normally we would have issues doing this. And another cool thing I can do now is debug this. I don't just have to run alerts, I can actually set up breakpoints and debug things. So if I say var a is equal to zero, and let's say after my uh, alerts here, I just say a plus plus, that'll increment a. We can alert a and just, you know, throw in some other code to set things up. The reason I do this is so that we can then go to this debug section and we're gonna click on run and debug. And we're gonna debug using extend script because now extend script is set up for Apple Silicon. And then we'll do the launch option. And once again, choose After Effects version that we're using or whatever particular app you're using. 
and boom, we get our first alert, the project, uh, this, and this other alert, perfect. But what we can do now that we're running and debugging is set up breakpoints. So if I set up a breakpoint here on these two lines of code, I'll hit run and debug again, launch. We're gonna launch in After Effects 2025. We get our alert, alert, and boom, look at that. We have our debugging information now working inside of Apple Silicon natively. There's no Rosetta Stone, obviously. There's no Rosetta setup uh, enabled. This is just pure Apple Silicon. And you can see we have all of our local variables that we could normally access, our global variables. All the things you could ever need to debug in a standard script or application are now available inside of here. Let's say we want to add a watch variable. We can add A. Right now, A is zero. But if we go ahead and keep debugging, and by keep debugging, I just mean to continue, we'll get another alert, and boom, we have another breakpoint. But as you can see, we're now watching our variable. We now see that A has been incremented up to one properly, and we now have a fully functioning and easy to set up setup for Apple Silicon debugging with ExtendScript. So again, I'll post the links to this uh, blog post in the description, as well as the direct link to download the VSIX file. But thank you again to Justin Taylor for making this uh, publicly known and a quick little guide on how to set it up and all that. It's gonna be super useful for a lot of my users who comment in my some of my most popular videos saying that, hey, VS Code and Apple does not work together. Guess what? Now you can set it up properly natively in Apple Silicon, set up debug, all the normal stuff that you would, and go ahead and create amazing scripts for all of your programs. But that's gonna do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure you subscribe, join the channel as a member, check out the links in the description to help support me, as well as check out this amazing extension. Again, thank you to Justin Taylor from Hyperbrew, and we'll see you guys next time.